Dennis, you know, I, you've been watching this thing for days now. Um, are you surprised with how it's coming in and the wobbles we've seen? Well, I can't say surprise, Wendy. And by the way, before we get going here, let, let's kind of say how the next six to 12 hours are going to go. So obviously we're going to be on continuous. Greg has been working, Shay has been working, Jason is here, we're all here, clearly not going anywhere because going outside is not a smart idea anyway. And we're just gonna kind of be rotating through our group and we have a new meteorologist on staff as well. Uh, Allie's gonna be in here as well. We're just gonna kind of go through the process because right now, as Wendy said, look, you know, there's no reason to be out. I mean, Chad said, yes, there is still a window of opportunity that's closing quickly. Honestly, if you live in Sarasota, I think that window has closed because you're now picking up the leading edge of the heaviest weather, the strongest winds, all right? So let's talk about where we are in terms of expectations, okay? So when we look at this right now, clearly there's your eye, right? This storm, and I'll tell you, last night, if you were watching at 11 o'clock, the models, the NHC still had a 2 or 3 a.m. landfall. But the models were going faster. They were going landfall maybe 10 or 11. Looks to me like it's going to be even faster than that. Now, now, granted, we are expecting this to slow down a little bit in some areas. But here is the issue, and this has been the issue for the last couple of days. Wendy just hit the nail on the head. Those wobbles. Wobbles are absolutely positively unpredictable. You, there's no one on Earth, there's no model on Earth that can predict them because there's so many factors that go into play. And what we have right now is exactly what we talked about yesterday and the day before. Remember how we said, as this is going to approach, you're going to have a lopsided system. Matter of fact, I think yesterday we were saying south of the eye, it might still be very windy, but you could very easily see stars out at night when this goes overhead because all of the major heavy rain and the deep convection is on the north side of this. So even if landfall, if landfall, and we'll talk about that in a minute as well, even if landfall is Manatee or maybe northern Sarasota County, the bulk of the squally weather, I think that's the best way to describe it, the very gusty winds, the incredibly heavy rain will be on the north side. So we've got so many things coming into play here. So we'll go back to our first point. Hurricane winds expand 35 miles out from the center. That's still pretty small. Now it's getting a little bigger, but it doesn't have a lot of time to get bigger. And not to mention, we think this is going to weaken some as it gets closer. So this is not an extremely large storm. Within that 35 miles, the number we've been saying from day one, I think five to seven miles near the center is going to be where the heaviest wind is going to be in relationship to the hurricane itself. You have two different areas of troubling weather. You've got obviously the eye and the winds right at the eye wall, right there, where they're going to be extreme, probably 100 to 110 mile an hour in some spots. But that is going to be in a very small area. So let's say landfall would be Bradenton. Let's just, I'm throwing it out there. I'm not saying it will be. Let's say Bradenton for an example. Five miles in any direction is where the bulk of the wind will be, but yet the heavy rain is way to the north. Pinellas, Hillsboro, Polk, Pasco County, you are going to already have, but you are going to get some really serious rainfall totals. That is not surge, nothing to do with surge. That is freshwater flooding, and we are going to see that. Matter of fact, we already have flash flood warnings in effect for part of Pinellas and Hillsborough County, and that is simply because of all the rain, and obviously there is a lot more coming in. So there's your eye. And like we said, if you draw a line east to west, south of this, there's, there's it's not even raining. It's because of that shear that we've been, what's happening is literally the winds aloft are pushing this off to the east northeast. And in doing so, it expands the wind field, but it weakens the wind field overall. So you have a larger area of tropical storm to minimal hurricane force winds, but you still have right around the center, that's where the winds of probably 100, 110 are gonna be in a very small area. A couple days ago, I likened it to maybe a five mile wide EF1 tornado. I mean, it's not that dramatic. I don't wanna make it sound that way because even within those sustained winds, there will be pockets of heavy wind. But it's a point is the overwhelming majority of our area, of our viewing area, you watching right now, you are not gonna be experiencing those severe winds. 
but unfortunately, there will be some. This will be the first major hurricane to hit the Bay Area directly in 103 years, and there's absolutely no way around it. That, nothing will change that. Might it weaken a little bit? Maybe. You know, might it move a little bit north or south? Possibly, and that still concerns us, and we'll talk about that in a minute, because there is still, let's rewind to Helene. Remember, everybody was focused on Tallahassee. The governor, everybody was talking about how we had those giant trees and it was going to be a debacle. It was going to be devastating for Tallahassee. And within the last six hours, it moved 30 miles to the east. All right? It was a wobble. Unpredictable. Absolutely unpredictable. Well, we're about six hours out now. So we're seeing some wobbles that can go in either direction. So. I encourage you, look, I don't think anybody's going to be out driving. I came in a couple hours ago and there were not many people on the road. But if you live anywhere along the coast, your window has closed. It really has. I mean, maybe Pinellas County, you could still get around in northern and central Pinellas. But the rain and the flooding and roads are flooded with flash flood warnings. I mean, look, we've had three days to prepare for this. I think we're kind of locked in now. And to quote our old storm chaser, Don Grimaise, we're hunkering down, right? Mm. So there's the eye, the center of the eye, and there about 70 miles, give or take, as this moves on shore. Now, by the way, it's not moving towards Sarasota at this point. It's moving a little bit more toward the north in this general direction, maybe even a little more north than that. And, and Jason will talk about that coming up in a couple minutes. But you do the math. It's moving, what, 16, 17 miles an hour? That's four hours. So if it slows down a little bit and it's forecast two, maybe it's five. But this will not be a 1 or 2 a.m., this will be a 10 or 11 p.m. So in terms of impacts, we're really now just starting to get into it. Yes, we have been talking about the tornado warnings. And I'll tell you, normally, and you guys know this, if you've lived here long enough, you've been watching long enough, and if you're new, you're learning now. Normally, when you have a hurricane, we see lots of tornado warnings. Very rarely, very rarely, do we ever get verification that they made it on the ground. We have already seen so many, we've shown it on TV, I've seen pictures on Facebook, you know, down in Miami as well. These are sizable tornadoes. So in these very far extreme bands here, and there's still tornado warnings in Northern Highlands and Southeastern Polk County, there is absolutely the potential for some EF1 tornadoes. I mean, some pretty legitimate sized tornadoes. All right, so let's recap the overall stuff here, okay? This is the latest. Winds of 130 miles an hour. It has weakened. The pressure continues to rise pretty quickly. That's good. The higher the pressure, the lower the winds. The lower the pressure, the higher the winds. But the fact that the pressure is rising means it is weakening. The sheer, everything is going as expected in terms of intensity, moving northeast at 16 miles an hour. But the big question, the one that is going to be the biggest factor in how this impacts our area is just where that wobble occurs. So when we look at these surge numbers, and, and, and again, that is going to impact surge. More than anything, surge. Look, if this thing goes 20 miles more to the north, the wind changes will be minor. I mean, there might be a little more wind in northern Pinellas or southern Pasco. But what will be dramatically different is the surge totals. And you guys know this. We've been talking about it for days on end. So wherever landfall occurs, wherever that eye occurs, crosses land, at that point and to the right is where the surge will be the highest. Imagine a, a counterclockwise, a little spin going on right there as it's coming in, right? And it's just going to push the water because surge has nothing to do with winds. It's all about how big a storm is that literally pushes the water to the coast, okay? So at the point of landfall, right along the coast and just below it, that is where the surge is going to be 9 to 13 feet. In comparison, Helene was about 8 or 9. I think it maxed out in some places nearly 10. Higher in Horseshoe Beach where landfall occurred. So that is our concern because if this were to wobble 20 miles more to the north as opposed to the east, and let's be honest, we usually see a wobble a little bit closer to the east. Typically, not always, but usually that's what it happens. But we are just so close to having this go into the bay, 
and potentially bumping up the surge from what would likely, like, I'll, I'll call it like I see it here. If you have a landfall in Sarasota or just north of Sarasota, you got a surge of three to five feet in the bay. I don't see anything higher than that if that landfall is that far south because you will have a legitimate offshore flow. Now, as it moves across, you might see a little more water coming in. But what's happened, and I'll explain why. What's happened is over the last three or four days, you guys have seen 10 to 15 feet all the way from Pasco County through Pinellas County into the bay and into Sarasota. And there's other sites that are using the actual forecast track from the Hurricane Center to determine the surge. Here's why you're seeing that 10 to 15. Because the Hurricane Center wants to make darn sure that every person out there sees what could be the worst case scenario. They don't want anybody afterwards saying, I didn't know. Makes perfect sense. Now, the challenge with that is the forecast, the official forecast is well to the south of where that would be a 10 to 15 foot surge. But again, the Hurricane Center believes, and you know, I agree with them, it's, it's tricky, it's a challenge. You know, because I've had this question 11 billion times in the last two or three days. I don't get it. Why is it 10 to 15 feet if the storm's gonna make landfall 30 or 40 miles to the south? It's a valid question. But I'm telling you that's why they've done it. So what we've done here is we're showing you what the Hurricane Center is saying, but we're telling you that if this landfall is more central Manatee South, there ain't no way in the world that they're gonna have an eight to 12 foot surge in the Bay. But if this gets closer to the Skyway, which would be a, a wobble, right? A wobble, if that were to happen, then the numbers would jump dramatically. Let me tell you something. I, I was talking to a buddy of mine who worked for the insurance industry and meteorologist, local guy, went to Palm Harbor, great guy. Parents probably watching right now, they live in Trinity. And he deals with a lot of insurance numbers. And Katrina is the all time costliest hurricane in the United States, $200 billion. He told me that if this storm went into Sarasota or just to the north of Sarasota, he estimates that the loss would be $100 billion. If it went into the bay, the loss would be about $200 billion, maybe a 175. So that 30 miles is the difference in about 75 to $100 billion in additional losses because the water and the surge would be significantly higher in the bay than it would be if it's south. And, you know, Jason and I have been talking about it. Greg's been talking about it. Shay and Allie, we're, you know, we've been doing our, our little get-togethers and talking about it. And that possibility absolutely exists. It does. And, and see, now, and I'm going to toss it over to Jason in a minute, but now we are no longer looking at models. You know, you, this is when you throw the models out the window and you look out the window. It's called now casting. And it's no different than what you're doing. So with all the technology and all the science and all the models that we have, when you get four to five hours out, look, there isn't any kind of a magic, well, let's look at the high, 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 super duper resolution model and see how it's showing. No. No, the models are the models, they're math problems. It's all they are. And when you get this close, no one on earth can predict where those wobbles are going to go. So as you're sitting at home waiting, the timetable, we're already seeing some of the heavy rain coming through. We're about to see, it's about to get real. Starting in Sarasota County, we're going to start to see more power outages. And again, this is the track, the track from the Hurricane Center. At this point, the track is practically meaningless. We know it's gonna move in in the next four or five hours, but where that 10, 20, 30 mile difference is the difference from catastrophic loss in the downtown area compared to a glancing blow. And unfortunately, that kind of loss for areas around Sarasota and off to the north. So there's your wind field. This moves onshore. Hurricane force winds start to move onshore you know, within the next couple of hours. But this is another perfect example of what we talked about with the rain. Because you have a system that's split in half. We've been saying it for days. You go, if you live in our southern counties and this comes through, I, I'm telling you tonight at nine o'clock, you could probably go up and see some stars. And yet you might still have 50, 60 mile an hour winds. Higher if you live in Sarasota or Manatee County. But the southern half has no rain, not a lot. The northern half does. Citrus, Hernando, Pasco, 
Pinellas, Northern Hillsborough County. You're all going to see easily 10 to 12 inches of rain and some even more than that. Winds, you know, obviously, I'll, I'll, I'll go out with this again. You know, you're looking at winds, hurricane force, sustained and gusts across our southern counties this evening. It's going to lead to widespread power outages. But I'll say this again, the extreme winds, the ones that are going to do significant damage, it's a very small window. We're talking five, six miles tops. You go out another 20 or 30 miles, you might have 65, 75 miles on our wind. So here's my message here. If you look at our entire viewing area from Citrus County to Sarasota County to Highlands County and everybody in between, when you look at this area, the overwhelming majority of our region, of our viewing area, will see winds of 65 to 80 miles an hour. There will be some spots that will have gusts significantly higher, but then you'll have that smaller area that is going to have most of the wind damage. But overall, when you look back at what's going to happen here, it's always the water. It's always the water that causes the catastrophic damage. And that is still, and it pains me to say this, Jason, because we're four or five hours out and we're still watching that wobble yeah. back and forth to determine where this is actually going to go. And it's got, if it's frustrating for us, you know how frustrating it is for folks at home. So Dennis, while you were on, you didn't see this. This is concerning. Come over here, if you don't mind. Uh, give me your expertise and your thoughts. So there's the four o'clock position. Down to 125, there is a little Some bit of good news there. there. Yeah. The bad news is, is this position here, it would have to make a hard right turn yeah. to come into Manatee and Sarasota County if that's the current position the National Hurricane Center is showing. Yeah. So would you expect at five o'clock for them to start focusing a little more north? Typically this far in, into the picture, mm -hmm. they don't make a lot of changes. Yeah. They're like, it is what it is. Yeah. I was talking to my same buddy, actually, Steve Bowen, a local guy, um, and he said the exact same thing a couple hours ago. It's going to have to make a really hard right yeah. to actually go in because what, what Jason's saying is, you know, east-west latitudinally, it's already almost at Sarasota, and it ain't going to make a hard right. It's not going to hook right. right at a 90-degree angle. So, yeah, I mean, you, you have – it's kind of why we're saying keeping it open for the possibility yeah. of a track closer to the bay. And like we said – that would change the surge, I would guess, at least three to four feet. Right, right. So I think over the next hour, hour and a half, we're really going to see, is this more Pinellas, Hillsborough County now, or if this Manatee, Sarasota is still in play? Either way, the surge numbers are still going to be huge regardless south of it, but this may bring those higher values a little more to the north. And you could argue even the winds too, but again, as we said, overall the wind field is about the same. It's that five to seven mile area, but that five to seven mile area could be northern Manatee, maybe even southern Pinellas. And I'll tell you, last night I was watching, I had a model that came out, the graph, and Wendy was actually over there and we looked at it. Yeah. And it had 101 mile an hour winds in St. Pete. Yeah. And it had the eye very close to St. Pete. And I looked at it and, and I actually did not show it on TV because the hurricanes, what happens is, you know, we kind of defer to the hurricane center Absolutely. track often. Mm -hmm. I mean, that's kind of, they're the expert of all the experts, best, right? Best of the best. Yeah. So when I see a model, that's just one model, right. that is so different from the NHC track, we're kind of like, well, let's yeah. just don't show it because it would be confusing. Yep. But Wendy and I, we looked at yeah. it, and, 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 um, and if what you're saying makes a lot of sense, I mean, that might very well come to pass, which would mean if you live in southern Pinellas, you would have to expect some stronger winds and potentially more search.